Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will point two different telescopes at the same deep sky object in space. One is a 122mm APO with a 683mm of focal length and the other is an 80mm APO telescope with 480mm of focal length. We'll see how different the same object looks based on the equipment you use and you'll decide what telescope does a better job. If you're interested in checking out the final result, please continue watching this video. Before we begin, I want to share a bit of a background on these telescopes. They both are triplet apochromatic refractors made by Sfiboni. The 122mm SV550 has a focal length of 623mm operating at f5.6 thanks to this 0.x focal reducer. It allows you to take a close look at deep sky objects while getting a relatively wide field of view compared to a higher focal length systems. I've owned this telescope for almost a year now and it has become one of my favorites. I'm going to release a video review after a year of using it, so consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for this video review. The 80mm SV550 APO, on the other hand, has a focal length of 480mm operating at f6. Although the difference isn't that huge in terms of focal lengths, the same object can look totally different because of higher field of view that this telescope has. Svibony is lending me this telescope and I'm about to send it to a next reviewer, but before doing so I really wanted to set uh, these two guys next to each other and compare how they perform under the same sky conditions. What about imaging cameras? Ideally it would be better to use the same camera sensors for both telescopes to provide the closest comparison possible but I don't have them at the moment, so I'll be using the following. 80mm APO will be capturing light with a ZWO2600 MC Pro, which has an APS-C size sensor, and it is a dedicated astronomy camera. Uh, they're gonna give me a pretty wide field of view with this telescope. And uh, a bigger 122mm APO is equipped with a SV Boni SV405CC camera that has four thirds cropped sensor. And basically, this camera is equivalent of ZWO294MC. I've chosen these configurations because of better pixel scale I will get with these cameras on both of these telescopes. So, yeah, let's uh, open the garage and I'll set these telescopes outside and we'll begin our imaging session. Let's talk about deep sky target I'll be focusing on tonight. So I'll point both of my telescopes towards an emission nebula called IC3096 and on the screen here is the Stellarium up now, so we can take a closer look at it. Uh, this nebula lies in constellation Cepheus. In general, emission nebulae are clouds of ionized gas emitting light. This gas is ionized by the high energy ultraviolet photons from the nearby hot stars and uh, this nebula I see 1396 is basically a mix of this glowing gas and also some dark dust structures uh, which basically making it an interesting object to capture. So in combination with my APS-C size camera and uh, an 80mm scope I'll get this field of view where I see 1396 will almost fully fit in the field of view of the camera and the telescope. And also, as you probably know, this telescope can be used with a 0.x focal reducer from SV Boni as well. So if you use it with uh, the 0.x focal reducer, you can even fully fit this nebula in the field of view. But tonight I'll be using just flattener. So here's my field of view with an 80 millimeter scope. And uh, meanwhile, my second rig uh, we'll be pointing primarily at one of the features of this nebula, so let's switch to uh, SV405C camera and my 122mm APO telescope. I'll concentrate uh, this field of view on one of the features of IC1396, which is the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Basically, this region is an area of future star formation and uh, the dust and uh, interstellar gas is more concentrated here in this part. And basically, this area is perfect place for future stars to be born. And uh, yeah, my 122mm APO telescope will be concentrating on this uh, smaller part of uh, the emission nebula. 
All right, guys, I'm about to begin my imaging session. Both of my telescopes uh, behind me, they're slowing to IC 1396 as I speak. Uh, once targeting is completed, I'll begin guiding calibration to ensure the quality of my future subframes. As guiding calibration is going, let's take a look at the sequence I'm about to begin. Both of my rigs will be taking 5 minute exposures. Since I'm imaging a hydrogen region, I'll be using a dual narrow band filter on both setups. In particular, I have two SV Boigny SV220 filters. And uh, on my scope with uh, 2600 MC Pro camera, I have a filter wheel installed. And uh, the filter number 3 is a SV220 uh, dual narrow band filter. Sequence in Nina for SV550 pretty much look exactly the same, uh, will be 300 second exposures. I do not have a filter wheel on this setup, but I have a filter drawer and uh, there I will install SV220 as well that I had received before uh, sales started. So on my 2600MC Pro there is a production version of SV220 and 122mm scope uh, will be running with a prototype version of SV220. Now if weather allows, I'm planning to capture at least 3 to 4 hours of exposure time through each telescope. And ideally I would want to capture more integration time of course, but I still hope to get nice images after this short integration. Alright guys, and here I am after two imaging nights in a row. I decided to spend both of them on the capturing uh, IC1396 Nebula. Uh, I just want to like briefly show you my stacked images. There was no processing yet. Uh, image on the left uh, here is almost seven hours worth of exposure time on IC1396 captured with 80 millimeter APO telescope with a dual narrow band filter. And yeah, as you see, I mean, there is no processing yet, but just is an idea of what you can capture using this setup. And uh, here is a picture that I captured using 122 millimeter telescope with cropped sensor. But yeah, of course you can see that we have a closer look at uh, the elephant's trunk nebula here. And if we zoom it in like 100%, zoom we see lots of details in the elephant's trunk while if we zoom in 100% here we'll get a wider field of view lesser details but um, this telescope basically allows you to look at the nebula as a whole as i said earlier the difference in terms of focal length wasn't that huge however the images that we get they're totally different although the target is the same and that's pretty much um, like the point i think of this video that depends uh, on the telescope you use, you can tell a different story about the same object uh, based on the focal length that you use, the camera that you use, and uh, of course the orientation of the camera field of view. I mean, I didn't cover this part, but the orientation also does make uh, impact on the image. So for example, this image on the left uh, will be looking good if uh, I keep it the way as it is, like landscape, while the image on the right, I think if I rotate it 90 degrees towards right, then uh, this image might look good uh, in the portrait orientation. So yeah, each image tells a unique story about the same target, and that's a really cool part about astrophotography. As you can see, both telescopes are unique with their own strengths. Whether you prefer close-ups or wired field images, you can find a telescope to meet your needs. Of course, there are different things to consider, such as a camera you use or a mount that will hold the payload. But those are topics for the next videos. I really hope you enjoyed watching this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. At the end, I will have my final two images captured with both of these rigs. So thank you guys so much for watching this video till the very end. I really hope to see you in the future videos. And until next time, clear skies.